everybody. This is what happens when you're neck deep in teardrop building and you're ordering stuff for the teardrop. One of the teardrop windows is here. We got a door in here. I'm not gonna take the bubble wrap off that yet because I think that's just bad luck waiting to happen. I've got some bigger wheels. Actually, this is a bit of a funny story. This is actually the second set of bigger tires and wheels I've purchased. I got 15 inch tires before these 13 inch ones, but they were way too big, rubbed up against the trailer. I started going down the road of possible wheel spacers. Another YouTuber at Spencer's Mountain, the YouTube channel, check it out. They're building a sweet like octagonal cabin looking thing. And they said, don't do spacers. The husband's a professional trailer builder, so I took his word for it. So we went down to 13 inch. I have yet to try them on the trailer, but before we get this thing mounted on the trailer, I gotta make sure I'm happy with the tire and wheel setup so we know the height at which I need to build the platform that this thing is gonna sit on. As we're working on the teardrop, I am also trying to finish the mobile bar. <laughs> I love projects. As many as I can possibly do at the exact same time is exactly when I feel like I'm actually becoming the semi-professional amateur I've always needed and want to be. Look at those apples. didn't freaking work. My pocket holes are way too high. Oh my gosh, what a disaster. 
Oh, I set the de uh. <laughs> We're not sure how I've made it this far, but keep watching to find out. I'm doing it wrong. I'm just, I'm rushing it. I'm rushing it. You know, the weather's nice out, and today I thought I was, you know, well I am. I'm motivated, but I'm just friggin' rushing this thing. I don't really know how to use pocket holes, apparently because my screws are now popping out every left, right, and center. Well, I'm frustrated now. So I'm gonna leave this alone for a while and take a look at the best way to do this. I thought pocket holes would make sense, but I think if I was to do pocket holes, I have to go from the outside in because I'm, you know, there's just not enough meat on the board here. And then I'll just have to cover up those pocket holes, you know, after the fact. All right. Like I said, we're going to take a break, come back. All right, guys, we're going to take a little bit of a break because Graham is about to lose his marbles. And we're going to talk about this video sponsor, NordVPN. Now, NordVPN, if you don't already know, protects your internet traffic with cutting edge security technologies, ensuring a strong and reliable encryption between your device and a VPN server. Basically, you transfer personal information 24 seven without you realizing it. NordVPN exists so that information stops being transferred to those who really don't need to have it. NordVPN does this by using advanced encryption standard with 256 bit keys. Quite honestly, I, I, I don't even know what that means. And I mean, I don't think it matters because the US government and the NSA uses those to protect their information and data. NordVPN is also based outside of Europe and US jurisdictions. That means they don't record, monitor, store, or log anything you do. Not only are you protecting your data by using NordVPN, but you can also access things that other countries might have access to that you don't have. Whether that's a Netflix show that you've always wanted to watch from the UK or Canada, or for my Canadian friends, you might want to be watching some stuff that's available down here in the South. Stop being a total amateur when it comes to not protecting your data and sign up for NordVPN by using the link in the description below for a serious discount. Thank you NordVPN for sponsoring this video and now let's get back to the build. Today is a new day. It's time to get after it. Welcome back. It's the same video, but it's a new day. I was so frustrated that I couldn't figure out the pocket holes correctly. And so I had to leave. I had to leave the project. I had to just get away. And so that's what I did. Anyhow, we're gonna go ahead and keep trying to build this teardrop platform with the drawers. That's what we're doing. We're building this so it elevates the teardrop shell over the wheels while also creating ample storage underneath. I've realized that pocket holes have to come into the thicker part of the wood and not you know, tie into the ends of the wood. There just isn't enough meat on the wood. When you have a pocket hole, it eventually either wants to crack or come through the plywood. 
so we're not going to screw around with that. Thank you for your patience with me. Thank you for those who know exactly what I should have done the first time and for keeping your cool. I know it's probably hard for you to watch me make some of these mistakes, but such is life. Let's do it. So I came up with an idea in my sleep. Instead of being a dum-dum and chipping out this plywood with a chisel and a drill bit that really isn't big enough, I'm gonna get my palm router. And just make sure those little holes are nice, crisp, and clean. And then eventually we're gonna put some epoxy resin in there and soak that into the wood and that will strengthen up those holes again since, you know, technically it's probably a weaker spot of the wood now. quality cabinetry right now. Okay. So I have <clears throat> enough drawer slides to do two drawers back here, you know, and then I'll have another center split down the middle. And these are 250 pound drawer slides. So, I mean, there's really no way I'll be able to maximize that. And I wouldn't want to maximize it, but might as well go stronger. That way, you know, you can have full extension. In between here, we have 46 and a half, or 46 and three quarter, right? Minus one and a half for each rail on, on this drawer. One and a half, so minus three for the rails. Let's say we do the drawers of the same thickness, which is, I think it's basically five eighths. Okay, so five eighths. Okay, let's do the math again. So 43 and three quarter. So 
basically you're getting 20 inch wide drawers, give or take. I love pocket holes. I love pocket holes. I love pocket holes. Yes, yes, yes. Oh my gosh, that's so perfect. Wow. Third time's the charm. I have no idea what's happening to my camera, but my camera died while I built this drawer. But thank goodness for you guys, because, um, well, it was a struggle. I've never built a drawer before, and it was, it's just kind of hard. Or I thought it was hard. Lo and behold, I did it. Somehow, I did it. But it's awesome. These are 250 pound drawer slides. This drawer is basically 40 inches deep. The drawer slides themselves are 36 inches, but that's fine. You're just gonna have like a little bit of a reach for some, you know, some of the smaller things or the things you don't need very often. I think I'm gonna still put a divider in here, but I mean, it slides, so I, I consider that a win. Now we're gonna try and build the second one and see if we can do it in less time than it took me to make this. Shouldn't be that hard, because this one took me like three hours. <laughs> Construction adhesive. So the side rails that make up the exterior portion of the drawers are six inches tall. So I have a six inch gap in there. But in order to have a little bit of gap above and below the shelf, or sorry, not the shelf, the drawer, so it can come in and out nice and easily, I'm shaving off a quarter. So then this is five and three quarters. So I have an eighth of an inch of room up top and an eighth of an inch of room below. That's what I did with this drawer. So far so good. Um, so we're just going to repeat on this one. That. Like so. Because I have rails sharing 
this single piece of plywood in the middle. I don't want my screws hitting one another. So we're an inch and a half back on that one. And so we'll go two inches back on this one. Mark two inches on either side. Boom. And that will be the start of the door slide. Okay, I'm using this piece of sheet metal to be my spacer. That one too. That'll give me the eighth of an inch that I need on the bottom. Mark the secondary. I only do the front too, so it still is able to pivot and get perfectly level. Uh, pull them out, so then we can access. And finish mounting it. We're all on the same playing field, two and a half. Two and a half, ugh. What the? Oh, I guess that works. Awesome. All right, guys, that does it for this episode. Uh, reason being, I'm not exactly sure what I'm doing for the front of the trailer or the hitch side of the trailer in terms of the storage. Uh, I did just go ahead and order four more drawer slides, so I'll have two more sets to possibly repeat what I did back here, because I think that'll be a, a good option. But I don't like to wait to release an episode and. I don't want to make you guys wait, so I figured I'd just release it and keep working on the teardrop behind the scenes and just prep that next absolute beautiful piece of art next episode. Be sure to subscribe and like because I'm going to be doing a giveaway of sorts and it's going to be cool. I'm thinking some kind of tool combo kit. I just want to show my appreciation for you guys and uh, that's it. So uh, thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. Helps me out. Shows me that you love me just as much as I love you. <laughs> All right. Peace. <laughs>